Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And here I'm joined by my colleague, Andre Carruthers. Hello, Andre. You know, I've I always have difficulty adding the 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 sign above the E. Um, yes. It was I, I think it was my colleague Jason, who's usually with us today, that, that showed me how to add it in. So um, yes. I'm thankful to him and for you for introducing me. The whole options of characters only. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to be talking about a term that I have struggled with when I first heard about it. Um, this notion of corporate parenting, which really sounds as if it's something to do with business, but it's not. Uh, but it is, but it's not. So, Andre, tell us more. Yes, yes, okay, I will, right. Okay, so there's a sort of uncanny slight theme of three in today's session. And um, so the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about corporate parenting. Um, now, I know that some of you could probably talk about it much more than I can, um, but as Kenji said, some people may just access the recording. So I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about corporate parenting. And then the second thing I wanted to do, uh, and the majority of the session is, is look at the corporate parenting online module. And then what I'm really keen to do at the end is for us to have an opportunity to talk about how you might want to use it in your colleges um, and, you know, how you might actually, you know, uh, be pretty flexible about how you use it and, and ideas that you may have. So I'm hoping that that hits the spot for you and that's what you were hoping to, to get today. So let me tell you a little bit about corporate parenting and apologies to people like Lorna Jenkins who could probably tell us this much better than I could. So corporate parenting came in under the uh, Children and Young People's Act in 2014, that, that act is in Scotland. And it came up with this um, role of corporate parent. And as many of you will know, that includes people like colleges, local authorities, the police force, the prison service, SQA, Skills Development Scotland, and many, many more. And, and it gave all of us six duties, which, and, and I suppose the overarching duty is about safeguarding young people and helping them reach their potential. But we'll look a, a little more at the six duties in a wee while. So that was the first thing that came along. Not that we hadn't been um, working with care experienced students before that, but that now we there was this statutory duty of colleges to be corporate parents. So the next thing that came along and really backed that up was the funding council then said, right, we've got a national ambition for care experienced students. And actually their vision is that by 2020, the outcomes for care experienced students will be exactly the same as they are for their peers. Because we know for the, at the moment, colleges are getting better and better and actually have been really successful at attracting care experienced students, but they're still behind uh, uh, by at least 7% in terms of staying at college and being successful at college. So in some ways, that's the place to focus on. And then following on from that, some of you will um, know about the promise, which is really the initiative that's pushing the uh, reports that were put together by the independent care review. And that's really now pushing all this on much further. And the promise is basically the Scottish government is saying that all children in Scotland will be loved and respected and, you know, must reach their potential. And again, from that has come other initiatives like each and every child, which is starting to look at how we begin to talk about care experienced people in a much more positive way rather than this oh dear, what a terrible thing and what, and probably, you know, you now, you know, you've been set back and you're likely to be set back for the, the rest of your life. And, and that's one, you know, that's fed a bit by the media as well. And as we in colleges know, that is absolutely not the case because we see all the time coming, people coming in and reaching their potential. So that's, that's a, a, a very broad, and that, you know, there's more I could have mentioned there, and we're going to put links to these things in the chats where I'm hoping Kenji is. So if you wanted to find out more about them, please, please do that. What I think all of us feel is what's unhelpful about corporate parenting is the word corporate, because it does sound like business. 
uh, it does. And, and, and I think these new initiatives are very much about saying forget they don't say that uh, overtly but it's it's about love and respect and care and i think that one of the important messages in corporate parenting is that in many ways we're corporate parenting all our students you know we should be interested in them we should be respecting them we should you know we are we are interested in them we are we do respect them we do keep them safe and so um you know, care experienced students are perhaps a little bit needing a little bit more of a scaffold for us to build for them because they may not have as much parental or adult support as other students, but they're not really wanting anything hugely different. We've got huge uh, scaffolding support in our colleges. So, sorry, I'll stop. I was going to say I'll stop talking at you, but that's rubbish. I'm, I'm now going to talk at you a bit more. But what I'm now going to do is just take you into the module. Um, so uh, here we are. Let's see if I can do this. Um, this is the College uh, Development Network uh, Professional Learning for Colleges page. So I am going to go so here's another three three stones it's as if it was planned so if once you get to this page so you would go into the college development network online learning and come to this bit here which doesn't immediately hit you as where the corporate parenting module might be but you'll see the word inclusion there so if we go into that and then scroll down so can i just ask um, some of you will be quite familiar with this module, I think. Is that right? Do you want to put a thumb? Do, if you know it uh, or you've been into it, do you want to put a thumbs up? Although I can't see everyone's picture. So I'm not seeing many thumbs, but oh, right. One or two. Good. OK, so uh, again, um, apologies if you're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going over things that you've you already know but I think it's important to tell you a bit about that module because I think some of you will not know this module at all so okay here we are corporate parenting in colleges it's got seven sections I, I, don't worry I've no intention of going through all seven sections this morning what I thought I would do is try and concentrate well well probably quickly showing you at least six of them concentrate a little bit on um on, on sections of them. So just quickly, so the introduction here, you can see that there it is, very short introduction. So basically this is an online tool for you to use, for staff in colleges to use, to find out more about what it's like to be care experienced, what effect that might have on you if you come to college, what we should be aware of. And it gives staff an opportunity to look at their own practice, how they might change it, and also how, how they might influence change in their own college. And you'll see here in the middle that of this that, that it really gives people permission to engage with the course as they want. So it says, you know, it provides you with opportunities to reflect on what you've learned and re relate it to your practice. But, you know, how much you engage with the module is up to you. There's no correct answers. You will not be marked on what you write. Only you will see what you write. Because I know that for some staff, you know, that will be an issue. So some staff can just come through this, read it, they don't have to engage with the links or any of the exercises. Other staff will wish to do all of that. So we hope that flexibility means that it allows staff to engage as is useful for them. And then you know, just very quickly, there are the learning outcomes there, you know, about understanding corporate parenting, gaining insight into the impact of care experience, reflecting on your practice, and understanding how your role can affect um, care experience students. And also, you know, thinking about your own response in that area. I mean, one of the things that this module, I hope emphasizes is that everybody at the college is a corporate parent. You know, that is the case, everyone is, but you know, staff who are not front facing may often think, 
it's nothing to do with them. And, and I'll show you how we, we deal with that. So we're going to go into the next section. So again, I'm just going to just show you the size of the next section, not particularly big. And it does some of what I've just done there now, talks about the Young People and Children Act, about the, uh, the, the national ambition from the Funding Council. And we're about to add in something about the promise. But then it also does something very useful in that it talks about who are care experienced people. And, you know, a lot, of, not probably the people that are here today, but a lot of people are surprised when they find out that you can be care experienced and have lived at home or lived with a relative. So, it, you know, some useful information there about what types of care people uh, find themselves in. So that, that's a pretty factual um, section. And now we go on to what I would describe as, as the, oops, sorry, I've done something wrong there. Save activity. No, I didn't want to save that activity. My apologies, here we are. So now I'm going on to, remember the seven sections across the top. I'm now going on to the third one. Now this module, um, was originally written by Who Cares uh, Scotland and the Open University, and they very kindly let us have it and edit it and rewrite it. But we most of this section, uh, we just had to edit um, because already Who Cares had put together the six impacts they wanted to talk about in terms of care experience. So uh, again, let me just, so in this section, it looks at six impacts that um, having care experience can have on a care experienced person. And what we do is we relate them to how might placement moves or constant placement moves or traumatic placement moves affect a person when they come to study at college. Also, we know that care experience people are much more at risk of being in the criminal justice system. And the third one is we know that they're less likely to uh, be successful in education. And sorry, I'm going a bit too fast there. More likely to leave school with less qualifications more likely to be in poor housing and homeless and more at risk of having poor mental health sorry poor mental health or have experienced some sort of trauma so that's the six um, impacts that we look at and let me just go back up to the top now and so what we have now is a pattern really it looks at each of one of these there's some information about that then there is, and this is where the module really comes alive with these lovely people who I've never met, but I now think of them as my friends, Dion and Charlie and Lee and Linda and all the people that we have in this module. And that, that was again, Who Cares Scotland built relationships with these people, which meant they were able to tell us about their experiences. So this is Dion and Charlie telling us about their experience in the criminal justice system which means, you know, you may then turn up at college with a criminal record and it really questions, well, how will you deal with that? Um, Dion had a criminal record because she flipped a cooked carrot at a member of staff. Um, you know, who knows what lies behind that story, but it held her back in many ways. So if we have a look here then at, um, let's have a look at Lee. This is a very short, this is educational attainment. Let's just play this video, which is 30 seconds long. Um, the, the not being able to set the maths at the time when I needed it is obviously causes a barrier now because it's one of your fundamental ones like English, math, science. These are the things that you mostly need and most people will put the restriction on you that you need to have maths to get into any sort of further education, higher education. So currently it's causing a barrier. And now as an adult, it's quite expensive to actually get that qualification now. So it is causing a big barrier. So, I mean, Lee 
appears quite often in the module. And you know what we discover about her was she was homeless when she was sitting her standard grades and she passed seven of them and failed her maths. But of course, that was on the courses she wanted to go on. That was difficult. So her care experience and homelessness caused that issue. But many people come to college who've not got the right qualifications. And it's how does college cope with that without saying, oh, poorly, care experience, lots of issues. It's an issue that many, many students come with. And, you know, it's back to that scaffold of support that we have in colleges. How do we deal with that? So that continues on that pattern. Um, people talking about each of these leads back again, telling us about um, her life. She's a single parent. One of the issues for her is she's late to class because of that. But that's an issue that all parents have. They've got to drop children off. It's not because Lee's care experience that that's an issue. It's just another um, barrier for her. And what one thing that we have added to this was a lovely video we've got. You may be aware of it from NHS Education for Scotland, which is this video about trauma informed practice, um, which is a super video and, and luckily includes um, colleges, which is which is great. So I'm going to just quickly take you on to the next section. Sorry, you I'm right on to Kenji. People won't see all this stuff. It's just because I'm a, an editor that all this stuff appears, I think. Right. right. You're special. Yes, very special. <clears throat> uh, so this is the bit we had to write from scratch. Um, and again, say, similar sort of pattern. Uh, what I did was I just followed the guidance journey. So it's very much, you know, the, the learner journey, coming to college, encouraging ambition. This section does quite a lot of posing questions. Does your college work with other corporate parenting parents? Um, that is a, a, one of the duties of corporate parents to collaborate with each other. So it talks about, you know, applying to college. Lee will tell us what happened when she she didn't declare because she didn't know she, she didn't realize that you could declare you were care experienced and we have a lovely video from um demi at ayrshire college is it lisa that's here from ayrshire college i don't know if you know demi um but she what i like about this video is a lot of the students in that we see here have gone on to hn and higher and, and university Demi's coming in at the beginning of her educational journey and struggling a little bit with how she manages herself in the classroom. And of course, a lot of our care experienced students are having that kind of issue. And, you know, I think it's really nice to be reminded of that. And she tells us a lot about how she came along to Ayrshire College with her support worker and how supportive the college were. So that's and then we come to actually coming to college. Um, about settling in and studying at college and there is relationships, relationships, relationships. We um, are told all the time by students that it's when staff appear interested and care about us, then we want to stay. And here's a classic one, Linda. I wish we had time to play Linda's video, but um, Linda came to college um, and on the very first morning, mature student in the class could have been people's mums thought right I'm off at lunchtime I'm away but Kate her lecturer obviously saw the fear in her eyes spoke to her made a promise she'd stay for the week and she stayed and she did a social care course and, um, and eventually to much to her surprise then went on to university so these Again, I'm really sorry that I don't have much time to play these videos for you because the whole thing comes alive. And so what then happens under all these videos or case studies is you get an exercise like this. So what support does your college offer care experienced students? Or, uh, in your role, is there any support you could offer at this stage? And then what we generally ask people to do is you know, we give people either ideas. So for example, ensuring a care experience is eligible for enough years of the care experience bursary to complete their studies. If the student decides to leave their course, helping them decide that it may be time for them, is not the right time for them to study. 
So all the exercises have either an example or if we have a look at this one, this is also a nice video where George here on the right works in the NHS and sees the NHS as a family business. And then we go on to take that a bit further by saying, well, colleges are large employers. Can't they be family businesses? Do you offer placements and internships for your students? Um, and then again, we go through the sorts of things that, you know, modern apprenticeships, progression, articulation, giving people information. So again, here we are with another reflection. As I said, people don't have to do these. Um, if they do decide to do them, they're not recorded. Um, you know, nobody else, that, you can save them, but nobody else will see them. So again, um, asking, pe giving people ideas if they can't come up with any, but in doing that, what we're also, as I say, we're offering ideas. So we're hoping people, it also makes them think, oh yes, I've got another idea, but also going, ah, oh, yeah, that might be a good idea for our college. We might do that as well. So that's a very quick leap through those two sections there. And then the section I'm is the final section is about the six um, corporate duties. Feedback we got was that this that the whole module is a bit too long. It says rather optimistically at the beginning, one to two hours. <laughs> you would never do it in one. Um, to be honest, if you if you decide to engage with it all, I think you're talking about closer three to three. So, but you'll see there, please note, look at all the corporate parenting duties, but only select and complete two of the six. And at the moment, we've only got university students doing uh, videos here because during the pandemic, it was just impossible for who cares to be able to see people one-to-one -one and, and film new videos, but we will do that. So again, it takes us through all of the six duties to being alert, to assessing needs and all that, and gives each student gives an example of how they benefited from that particular um, duty. I'm not going to go into the resource section because um, we, uh, you know, that is definitely something that you could investigate yourself because it's, but I'm just going to quickly show you the knowledge check. So again, this is something that you might decide that you would ask staff to do. So staff can answer these nine questions. If they answer them correctly, they can get a certificate or a digital certificate. But just quickly to take you through this one, this is very, and so this is very much based on lay standard grades. She's told this person at her interview, um, I, you know, I'm not, um, I haven't got my maths and, and it, it just basically says here are you know three um he, here are three questions he, three answers to this and you know which is the most appropriate and basically the well not the right answer is uh you know if you look at the very first ones it turns out here um we'll help you look at the issue with your maths including whether you need to pay to sit your maths so we're not saying it's not a problem but we will support you and that's the right answer. And if I had time, I'd quickly go through um, them and show you that at the end, you then, if you don't get 10 out of 10 or whatever it is, it's not 10 out of 10, then you can go back in and have a look where you went wrong. It, 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 it is shuffled. I mean, Kenji was such a help with this. I mean, it was help throughout the whole thing, but um, we had, some back and twos once or twice I wanted to say can we just put all of the above and he would say no and there is a question I just wanted to follow up on that there is a question that says whose job job is it to support care experienced students and I list you know marketing lecturers support staff IT um, estates and it's everyone's job um, and, I, and I hopefully that's been explained in the module as well. So that's a hugely fast whip through all that. Um, and so I'm going to stop sharing. Um, I just hope that's given you an idea of, you know, how, of what it's like. Please go in and have a look at it, listen to those and watch those videos. They're fantastic. 
and, and do some of those reflections. So I'm, I'm well aware that where we are time-wise, Kenji, um, but I'm very interested to hear where, what people think in terms of how they might use this or just feedback. The first thing um, Lorna added into the chat, she asked, is it free? Oh, yes, it is free, yes. Um, and the other thing that somebody might be thinking is, oh, well, maybe you're not actually, but Kenji will be able to explain that you can have this on your own platform. Is that the right term, Kenji, at college? And we have got colleges already doing that so that people can access it. Could you explain that, uh, Kenji, much so, better than me? <laughs> I'm not sure how much better, but... Um, we do host the course on our own Moodle VLE. So you have two options, really. We can create a link to the course via your VLE to ours so that your staff can log in using their own credentials and work through the course and receive results. Um, or we can provide you with a copy of the course if you prefer. So whatever works for you. The advantage of keeping it linked to ours is as Andre works in the background and continuously updates it with content, you'll always have access to the latest version of the course. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that's, we are, I mean, at the moment, who cares are going through it, looking at and updating the stats, as I say, we're going to be adding stuff in. So I think that's a huge advantage. Um, we know that Edinburgh College is going to launch it and use it in February, um, Fourth Valley have built it into the, the review of their corporate parenting plan and it will become part of the professional development um, plan as well in that it's going to be related to staff reviews. Um, Ayrshire are using it uh, to a certain extent, I think. I'm not sure how much, Lisa, whether you're able to tell us more about that. And, and North East Scotland College are hopefully going to use it. And there's somebody else who's also keen. But anyway, I'm really keen to hear from you now, if you've got time just to spend a few minutes uh, telling me what you think after that very quick introduction and whether you might want to use it in your own college. Um, I'll, I'll chip in. So we're, I'm West Lothian College. So we actually um, have got the link to our Moodle and we right. promoted it as part of Care Experience Week in October. Um, mm -hmm. What we're finding at the moment, staff are exhausted with online learning. So yeah. I, I don't think it's the topic. I think that staff are just exhausted. So we had considered in, we have a staff mandatory training, which takes about six to eight hours over the course of an academic year to be completed. And we had considered including that in that, but it would just add an extra two to three, you know, potentially two hours onto an already detailed training. So it, I think obviously this, this has been a really good session and I would definitely go back and, and try and signpost it but that's that's the feedback. And I think it's just the virtual world that we're living in, but the feedback is that people are just exhausted with, with, with training, online training. I mean, Julia, I wondered, because I, you know, it's very hard to pitch uh, a module, any piece of learning for as diverse a staff group as you have in a college. And I wondered if, you know, for some areas that what might happen is that when you have a staff development, or professional development day, you might take a group of staff, say like estates, who, who might come across somebody experienced, who's experienced trauma, having, you know, a, a bit of a meltdown or something like that or or whatever that might be something that they could do as a group yeah and somebody could lead that <laughs> you know what <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was, we've got a February conference and we're in the planning stages at the moment. So that's I've made a note of that could be a potential yeah. option um, as part of that conference, because we are talking potentially about doing something linked to that as part of the conference. But it's still at the planning stages just now. So definitely yeah. I've benefited from being here to be able to take stuff away. And we're going to mute now because the dog's barking. OK, OK. <laughs> 
What about anybody else? Anybody else got any thoughts? So, so Andre, it would be nice to hear from other people, but unfortunately, just oh, right. for the purposes of our recording, that brings us to the end of this particular session. Now, I, I, I should say I agree. There are some very powerful videos in, in that course. And that if you are using this as part of staff development, even picking out a couple of those videos and playing them in a shorter session, just to just to encourage people to think about what is corporate parenting and what yeah. are your responsibilities and what can you do to make a difference. Um, I, I think a lot of those stories, that narrative can be very impactful for people who are just learning about this area. But uh, thank you so much, Andre, uh, for the session. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to your next one. And we're <laughs> definitely inviting Julia's dog back because. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. He, she just looks so cute. <laughs> but until then, as always, everyone, until we meet again, stay safe. <laughs>